G'day collectors, Rob here for episode 8 of Aussie Diecast Reviews. Hope you're all doing well and I hope you're enjoying the show. So as I said in the previous episode, it's that time of the year here in Australia. It's the enduro season. So I'll keep in the theme of um, Bathurst cars and Sandown cars in the build up to the big one, the Bathurst 1000 and in a few weeks time. So for episode 8 we're going to go back into the 80s era of Australian motorsport. So the 80s era of touring car racing here in Australia, say from 1980 to 1984, was some of the best looking and best sounding and it produced some of the best racing in the history of the sport. This is where the Holden vs Ford rivalry was very strong with fans, teams and drivers. Plus this car we're going to look at today has been embedded in the history of the Bathurst 1000. So as I said, I think I said in episode 1 with the Bathurst 1000, the race creates so many unbelievable moments in the actual Sunday's big race. Each And with Bathurst, it's actually not a purpose-built racetrack. They built it back in the 1950s, um, and I think it was during the Depression or something like that. And they actually built the, the road as a scenic road. Um, the mayor of Bathurst decided to, to build this yeah, pretty much a scenic road around the mountain. But uh, I think in the back of his head, he was a smart man, and he actually saw a actually decent, you know, racetrack for it. So, um, yeah, they built this track just on top of a mountain, and it is what it is today. Um, each part of the track has got its very characteristic um, corners. Every year something happens at the race, either it be a massive crash or just something, just something crazy would happen. Um, as I said, it's probably in the top five of racetracks in the world. For me, it's number one, being an Australian, of course. But yeah, it is. Uh, if you ever get a chance, if you are in Australia and you have been, but if you are from watching from overseas, it is a race that you you know you need to watch. It's just like an Erberg or a, a Monaco or a Spa Spa. What's it called? French Franca Champs or something like that. It's just one of those tracks that's just unbelievable to drive on as well. So anyway, let's get stuck into it, and I'll kick it off, and I'll be reviewing this car here. Sweet. Alrighty, so here we have a Bianti model car. Now, as I said before in a previous episode, these are just um, five-liter plastic containers that I have for some of my model cars, and this is what I meant on the last episode about the the cardboard boxes with the display box with the seafood plastic, and yeah, obviously these are pretty. Pretty um pretty old now uh, compared to say the new phone boxes and all that that other companies produce. Um, so yeah, you used to have these used to come with screws. Then you'd have to pull the car out of this box with this plastic um, strap kind of thing. Then you used to have to unscrew them. Um, so yeah, that's what they look like. So as I said, it's a Bianti model car. It is a 118 XE Ford Falcon. The team is Palmer Chew Mills Racing or Dick Johnson Racing and the drivers are Dick Johnson and Kevin Bartlett. This car is based off the 1983 Bathurst 1000 Top 10 shootout car. So it is not a Bathurst winning car, it's more of a part of the Dick Johnson collection that be any do or it is part of the Ford collection. So I think I have explained a bit about Dick Johnson before in a previous episode. When you think of Bathurst and Dick Johnson, so to speak, he has very unlucky history with Mount Panorama. He's had a lot of bad luck and he's had some good luck. Uh, yeah, so yeah, don't get me wrong, he's had a lot of success, but for the most he's had some unforgettable moments at that race. And in this episode, this is one of these moments in the folklore of the history of the great race. So without further ado, let's have a bit of a look at what this car did. green flag, the green car, and the man from Queensland, Dick Johnson, underway. This is the heavyweight of the race, the big falcon. Oh, the Queenslander puts the wheel out as he goes round Hell Corner. Enormous horsepower under the bonnet there. Giant strides up Mountain Straight. Heading up to GTX Bend. Just listen to the 351 work. To the right-hander. 
the climb to the top of Mount Panorama. As Queensland's Dick Johnson goes after pole position. Big new wheels on the Falcon, sits on the road so much better. A ton of power on the ground. And listen to the cheers of the crowd across the top of the mountain as one of Australian motorsport's most popular drivers guns the big V8. Everybody's hero, Dick Johnson. Listen to the cheers. Across the top of the mountain in 115.8. If he keeps that up, I hate to think what the final lap time Oh, is he's hit the fence oh. and he's gone off the track into a tree. The 1983 Hardy's Heroes Top 10 shootout featured one of the biggest moments in the history of the great race. And it is one of those moments that is etched in the memories of all race fans. Dick Johnson was sure to be on the front row of the grid that weekend. But Johnson was pushing his 17 greens tough Falcon to the limits. The car was an absolute write-off and Johnson was a certain non-starting car for that incident. But the accident set off an amazing chain of events that led to Johnson and co-driver Kevin Bartlett lining up on the grid for the next day for the, in a replacement car. The destroyed Falcon was replaced by an ex-Bob Morris Falcon for the race on Sunday. After an incredible all-night rebuild, the car saw the salvageable mechanics from the wreck placed into the replacement car, which was repainted green and had the 17 and all sponsors added to the Falcon. Johnson would still start from 10th place on the grid, for the race, but unfortunately 17 Falcon would end the race at DNF and would finish in 39th position. And now let's look at the model. Yep, unbelievable bad luck for Dick Johnson that weekend and very very lucky to walk away out of that one. Okay, so onto the box. So yeah, as I said in previous episodes, I was talking about the clear plastic display box. Um, so this is the car that the car we're going to be looking at comes in today, so you've got the backdrop there of the Ford Falcon XC signatures there, so you've got the Dick Johnson Racing Ford XC Bathurst 1000, 1983, uh, official Dick Johnson Racing product, turn it around, you've got the picture of Dick Johnson there, in the back, so that is the box. Alrighty, so moving on to the Certificate of Authenticity, so you have Dick Johnson's signature there, personally signed by Dick Johnson. Uh, limited edition of six, uh, 7,620. I have 2,489. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much the certificate. Um, another thing here, if you can see, it says collection model number six. So this is number six of the actual, say, the Dick Johnson collection. This, is, was, was, this was the sixth car out of the collection. No flyer. Today, um, I don't think this car came with a flyer. Well, when I brought it, it, um, it didn't didn't come with a collectible flyer. And I'm pretty sure they actually didn't come with a flyer. So, no flyer today. Alrighty, time to reveal this car for you, and there you go. So, the Ford XE Falcon. The XE Falcon was a revised version of the XD Ford Falcon. So, it was just some minor external differences, like the new front bar. Uh, rear bar, wing, and the tail lights. But yeah, very, very 80s style car with the big flared wheel arches, uh, big rear wheels. You know, they've got a lot of rubber compared to today's racing. And again, these were Group C specification rules of these cars. Uh, and again, an Aussie muscle car. And as Dick Johnson says, these were just hotted up road cars. They weren't really a race car compared to today's race cars, but these things were a stock standard road car, they bolted in a roll cage, a racing seat, uh, tuned the engine up a bit and away you went. But yeah, I love to look at these, I just love to look at these 80s cars, really aggressive looking machines. Plus, um, Dick Johnson had a lot of success with these cars as well in the 1980s. So yeah, as I said in the, um, the pre-video of the car, Johnson was sure to be on the front row of the grid that weekend. I mean, he, he was pushing the car to the absolute limits. Um, but when he got to Forest Elbow, he ran wide. The right side guard hit the 
the wall as it, on, on the approach to Forest Elbow. Uh, tilt the car to the right and smash into a tree. So this car is called the tree car or the top 10 shootout car. Um, now as I said with Dick Johnson, as in luck when it comes to Mount Panorama, I think in well, I think it was 1981. Someone threw a ruck at the at his XD Ford Falcon, but I'll get in, I'll show you that in another episode. So to go from that that was an that car was an absolute write off, and you move two years into 1983, and then he hits a bloody tree. So that's what I mean. He's just had unbelievable bad luck at the race, but you know what? He always comes through and he he pulls. He pulls a miracle and he's always on the grid half the time anyway, but um, yeah, as a Holden fan, I'm a big fan of Dick Johnson. Um, he's always stuck it out to the good and bad, so yeah, I've got a lot of respect for DJ. So as always, we'll start off with the front of the car and we'll work our way around. First off the mark, absolutely spot on ride height with the actual model from the anti-model cars. Um, yeah, spot on. Um, so as I said, a lot of cosmetic changes from the XD to the XE. I think it was mainly the headlights and the front of the grill. But um, yeah, beautiful looking car from the any model cars. Uh, we'll have a look at the bonnet and the engine. Alrighty, so looking at the bonnet, um, you've got the detailed engine pins for the bonnet there. Very realistic looking pins there. Um, now, with this 17 logo, See how it's like tri-colours there? This is the Channel 7 logo. So I'm guessing this was Channel 7 Brisbane. I'm guessing because it says um, you love Brisbane. So there's some other little features there. Um, so we'll have a look at the bonnet. Let's see if it stays up. I'm pretty sure it will. And oh, it just stays up anyway. Half there. Um, so with the engine... These Group C cars, they used to call the Group C cars here in Australia the Big Bangers. Um, yeah, so they were very powerful cars. The Ford XE Falcon had a 5.8 litre, I think, engine, Cleveland engine, Ford engine. Um, it would produce anywhere from 450 to 550 horsepower. Um, so, yeah, you know, you've got all the detailed canisters there, the engine bay, the engine cover, that doesn't come off. Um, but yeah, this is a pretty old car now. I think it's a couple of years old. So yeah, it's still still pretty well detailed from the anti model cars. So yeah, accuracy wise and detail wise, not bad, not bad. Alrighty, now we'll have a look at the side of the car. Alright, looking from the side. Uh, now this green, this paint on the car, this is called Kermit Green that Dick Johnson ran from 1983 to 1985. I'm pretty sure. So it's got reference to Kermit the Frog. But um, yeah, beautiful looking car. Um, Paintwork and decals very well preserved and very well done from the Andy model cars. Um, so some of the features here, like I said, you've got the big 80s flared guards. I just love the big flared guards on a big race car. Uh, wheels and you've got the detailed, I think these were brake duct covers that they ran in some of the 80s races and 90s races. These, I think these were just for brake temperature, they kept the brake temperature in the brakes. I think it was just for better aero to the actual brakes as well. Um, you got the big massive, I think these were 20 inch wheels. Um, massive, massive wheels on the back. Uh, a lot of rubber on these cars, which I think, you know what, I think they should have bigger race, big racing wheels nowadays. Um, they give them a lot more grip and I think it would produce a lot more better racing. So yeah, this car is an iconic car for Ford fans here in Australia. Yeah, but as a Holden fan, I just, yeah, it's a cool looking car. Cool looking car. Alrighty, we'll have a look at the rear of the car now. Alrighty, so with the rear of the car, uh, the boot actually doesn't open up. But basically underneath here, it would just be the fuel sump. Um, you can actually see the fuel holes. So these were drum, they have a big drum full of fuel. They tip it upside down, very NASCAR style. Um, so yeah, with the XC, the change of the rear tail lights from the XD. Um, then you've got the tow cable there. Uh, down the bottom you've got the fuel sump. Um, yeah, very, the tooling on this car by Biani is absolutely sp spot on. Um, probably one little thing is I'd probably say the rear of the car, which the guards need to be a little bit bigger, but 
Um, other than that, very well done by Bienny. Alrighty, so we'll have a look underneath the car now. Alrighty, so looking underneath, you've got the fuel sump, the diff there. Um, very green underneath this car. Um, so yeah, then you've got the exhaust system, the transmission and the engine, and all the control arms. Um, so yeah, that's underneath the car. Then we'll have a look at the interior. Alrighty, so this is the shot of the driver's side. Now, in this car, Dick Johnson ran, I'll show you. He actually ran um, sheepskin racing cover and seats. So, yeah, this, these were very iconic thing that Dick Johnson did. These are sheep wool skin covers for his racing seat. Um, so, yeah, they've got the actual fabric there. If you touch it, it feels very, yeah. Um, so, very good detail there from Bianni. Um, the floor, you've actually got the heat pan down there at the bottom. Actually, no, they're just, they're just racing mats, I'm pretty sure. But all of the floor, is um, there's a fabric in there for the carpet. But um, other than that, very, very good detail of the interior. Got all the taco meters there. Um, ignition switches and all that. Um, roll cage. And you've got the racing harness, so that was the passenger side door. We'll have a look at the... No, that wasn't the passenger, that was the driver side. We'll have a look at the passenger side door. Alrighty, so looking out of the passenger side door, you have the... I think it was 5 or 6 speed gearbox. Um, some little features there, you've got the handheld fire extinguisher. So if there was a fire, the actual driver would have to pull out that fire extinguisher and pull him out of himself. Um, then yeah, you've got the roll cage. Um, window rollers there so um, yeah when Dick Johnson actually had that crash as I said they had to find a replacement car I think it was an ex-Bob Morris XE Falcon and the parts from this car they had to pretty much put into this replacement car so um, and they only got it done in a matter of, a matter of hours they had to repaint it and um, yeah, put all the decals back on it, and they put it on the grid for that for the race on Sunday. So yeah, unbelievable workmanship from the teams, and yeah. So I think that wraps up of everything on the details side. So I'll give my honest review about this car, and we'll wrap it up. Alrighty, guys, time for my honest review about this car. First up, quality. Unbelievable quality from Bianni model cars for this car and the paint decals accuracy uh, Tooling all very high standards uh, You get opening doors a decent detailed engine bay and a very detailed interior All in all very good quality car die cast model car from Bianti um, Plus you get a signed certificate from Dick Johnson himself. So again very very good quality that brings me to detail as I said, the tooling and the detail are very, very well done. To point out a, you know, a couple of couple of things, um, they've replicated the sheepskin seat covers and the detailed brake covers are some of the things about this car that are very well um, detailed. And the accuracy compared to the real car is, you know, very, very similar, very high. So um, yeah, that's some of the detail points. Uh, that brings me on to price. I brought this car from my local hobby dealer for, a th I think it was $195. Um, that was a couple of years ago now. I, I think I was still in high school when I brought this car. So, But yeah, this car was released back in 2001, 2002, I think. So it's just a very old car now. But getting back to price, these things are going for an asking price of anywhere from $400 to $600 now. So yeah, they're a very expensive car now. But... Um, yeah, very good investment anyway, so um, yeah. That brings me to how rare is the car. Well, look, for what happened to the actual car and what happened to Dick Johnson that weekend, I would say, yes, it's a, a rare car just as a collector. But, you know, they're not that, that hard to find. You'll always see them on eBay or at a swap meet. It's just handing that over the amount of money if you want to pay, I guess, if you're a collector. That brings me to eBay price. Uh, as I said, there's a couple... On eBay at the moment, they're going for around $400 to $600. So if you're after one of these cars, there is a couple on eBay now. But, um, but as always, make sure you know what you're getting off eBay. 
That brings me to goods and bads. We'll start off with goods. Um, so if you're a Dick Johnson collector or a Ford collector, you definitely need this in your collection. It is a beautiful looking model car, all opening parts. Yeah, so in my books, yeah, very good, very good in my books. That brings me on to bads. Not a real lot of bads. A couple of things like the with the model is they're missing race cam um, in the front and in the back of the car. So if you look at some of the old race footage, you'll see a big, big camera in the front of the car on the passenger side seat. And you'll see like a small white camera mounted on the rear windscreen. But other than that, phew, there's not a lot of bads. Uh, rating out of 10, I'll give this a solid 9 out of 10. A very well detailed car, uh, display box. All in all, a very, very good model car. Car to compare it to. Uh, yes and no. Uh, Biani are the only model co car company that, at the moment that produces the XD and XE Ford Falcons. I really can't see classic car collectibles or Apex making making them. Maybe maybe classics, but yeah, more likely in the long long future. But at the moment, no. And I would say that for Bianti as well. Bianti model cars they have stopped producing the XD and XE models for a couple of years now. Now I have recently been informed on the Bianti forum by a fellow member that Bianti lost their tooling and the uh, moulds of the actual car in a factory over fire overseas I'm guessing that would be in China so yeah that's a real shame from Bianti because they do make an excellent car with the XD and XE Falcons but um, you know maybe they'll remake them one day in the near future but um, yeah these things cost a lot of money to um, actually produce and tool so yeah maybe they will maybe they won't now there is two versions of this car as well. There is this car here. This is the top 10 shootout car version. And then there, there is the morning after version, which um, they, which was the morning after, so it was repainted differently. The paint was a lot darker and some of the decals were missing, which I did have, but I sadly I sold it about two years ago and I'm kind of regretting it at the moment now. Um, so the car that I'm talking about now, I'll put a picture up of what it looked like, so here you go. So that car was not released to the public, it was a car that Bianti made for the 2013 Diecast Model Car Convention that they have every year or so. So yeah, I think they only made 400 of these things, I'm pretty sure. Um, so they were very very low numbers and like I said I'm kind of re regretting that I actually sold it now um, so with that version as I said it was um, paint the paint was different it was like say at the top of the bonnet this was there was no Channel 7 logo um, it just looked different it was like the same looking car but the actual paint and um, yeah all the decals were missing um, so yeah there was there's this version and there is the morning after version. Um, now I sold that back in 2013-14 I think for around $450. Um, I sold that on eBay but um, I think they I haven't actually seen what they're worth now on eBay but I'm guessing they would be up there so uh, keep that in mind if you are going to buy um, these types of cars there is two versions there is the top 10 shootout or the tree car and then there is the morning after car um, which was released for the diecast model car convention so that's it for episode 8 for today guys I hope you enjoyed it um, please subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so yet uh, like share and comment all that good stuff and um, yeah as I said here in Australia it's that time of the year of the enduro so yeah the next couple of cars I'll show um, will be Bathurst 1000 cars I might sh actually I haven't showed a Bathurst winner yet so I think I might show a Bathurst winner um, and I think I might do a Craig Lowndes Craig another Craig Lowndes episode just to tell you a little bit more about Lowndesy and um, yeah. so yeah that's it for today guys and I'll catch you next time for another episode of Aussie Diecast Review. So, catch ya.